Hey folks, it's Matt. I want to walk you through Azure Machine Learning Studio and show you how we can use it to train a classification model without having to go into a lot of technical depth or know a lot of things about models. So let's check it out and see what we see. So this is Azure Machine Learning Studio. I have the results of some historic uh, experiments that I've run before, uh, but I also have the ability to go in here and click on Automated ML. So I'll click on that or click on the sidebar and it takes me right here into my automated machine learning um, area. And this is the simplest way of running machine learning in Azure. Uh, it's a no code approach. Actually, it's not even a designer approach. It's really a wizard approach. What you do is you click on new automated ML job. And the next thing you need to do is you need to specify some sort of data asset. You can select what you've already uploaded or you can create a new one. So I can click create here and I can say, uh, Titanic from Kaggle, for example, and <laughs> say two because I already have one of those. Uh, I'll hit next and I'll choose to take this from a local file. I next need to tell it where to store it and the defaults are usually fine for your needs. And now I'm going to actually give it the files uh, that I care about. And this is actually just going to be a train and test 2.csv. I uploaded this from uh, Kaggle.com. You can see another video that I did on that if you're curious about that process. Uh, but I'll click Next. And now it's going to kind of analyze that data and see uh, what traits my columns have. And it's going to, add, going to make some suggestions for me. And it's asking me a little bit more about the data set. And this looks to be pretty good to me. Uh, if I needed to, I could change you know, it to be a semicolon or tab or space limited field. Uh, I could have it skip the first row or whatever, but this actually looks pretty good. So I'm just going to click next. And now I can choose uh, if I want to ignore certain uh, columns. So for example, I probably don't want the passenger ID, but I probably do want the age and I can change that to be decimal, integers, uh, whatever it might be. Now, I'm not uh, super deep on this Titanic data set. I, I, I went the diehard route when learning machine learning last year. Um, but this looks to be pretty good. If there are problems, it would kind of flag those for me. Uh, and now I'm going to click uh, Create. And that's actually going to go out and, and upload that data set. It should show up here in a moment. And if I click Refresh and then select it, I can now use my data set. So now that I have a data set selected, I can choose an experiment. Um, this is just kind of a grouping of machine learning runs you've done before. So for me, this is just going to be Titanic. I could create a new one if I wanted to. It doesn't really matter, but if you keep running the same training runs and you want to see how performance differs over time, that's what an experiment's for. Next, I'm going to choose what, what uh, column I'm trying to predict. In this data set, uh, it looks like I'm going to choose the, the two vived. So uh, this, this Titanic data set maybe has some interesting quirks about the column names, it looks like. Um, after that, I need to choose what compute resource to use. This can be either compute cluster or compute instance. I typically run on compute clusters, and I can select one of the ones that I've already uh, already provisioned. Uh, so here, I can go with my GPU promo if I wanted to. If you don't have any, you can click new, and you can go out and create a new, uh, a new machine learning cluster or compute instance, and it'll help you out through that way. But I already have one here, so that's fine. Um, I can now choose which task I want to do. I want to do a classification run. There is this nice little enable deep learning, which lets you use uh, deep learning for deep text and deep, deep meaningful things. I don't really need that. It's not that this, this complex of a data set, so I'm going to uncheck that. If you do check that, your, your training process usually takes a lot longer. Uh, classification is what I want. And now I can go down here and I can check out the additional configuration settings. And I can change the primary metric I care about. So area under the curve, accuracy, normalized recall, uh, macro recall, average precision score weighted, and precision score weighted. Area under the curve is usually a pretty good one. I like this explain best model because it's actually going to tell me why my model is good or bad uh, for the best one that, that, uh, that we, we find. I can actually go in here and I can uncheck, I can check some of these and say, hey, I really don't want you to use a decision tree. For example, I could specify that. Uh, or I could uncheck this and choose only the, the models I want it to consider. But I'll just keep it using all supported models. Um, you can take a look at some additional settings here. Uh, the exit criterion is one that I like to, to play with a lot because uh, I don't want to run for six hours. I can also set a maximum 
uh, score threshold. So, hey, as soon as you give me a model that's, you know, 0 0.98, 98% or higher, you know, just stop. I don't think we're going to get that much better than that. So just stop if you hit that. Uh, and then current concurrency here, I can choose how many uh, iterations are running in parallel if I wanted to customize that. So click save. I can change the featureization settings for my columns. Um, and usually just leaving these on auto is a pretty good move. But if you wanted a little bit more uh, strength and, and customization, you can do that. But I'll click next. And now it's it, it now it says, hey, how do you want it to validate the data? Um, on small data sets, you can use auto. Uh, larger data sets, I think you have to specify like some percentage of data with a train test split. You can also up, upload some custom validation data set. Usually, if you have the auto option available to you, you want to use that. That's my experience. Um, but when I click finish, it's actually going to go out there and it's going to start running my machine learning uh, run. It's going to try all sorts of different. Uh, it's going to try all sorts of different algorithms and hyperparameters for those algorithms, and it's going to say, "Hey, Matt, here's here's the forty I tried, or whatever, however many I could try in an hour. Um, this is the best one. This is the worst one. This is what I think you ought to use." So we'll take a look at that as it completes and just see how that works. So that's how we go about and uh, run a classification experiment using automated ML. Stay tuned for some future videos where we talk about the various. Uh, resulting models and the metrics associated with those and how we can interpret those. But uh, happy training.